We know that animals are adaptable, unpredictable, and can come up with extremely creative solutions to problems. Like, I don't think people would have guessed that there are several species of fungi that eat deadly nuclear radiation and use it for energy to grow. Life gave them radioactive lemons, and they turned it into radioactive lemonade. So when we look at the ecological disaster of plastic pollution, we might wonder whether some lucky animal will eventually develop the ability to digest plastic and use it for energy. I want it to be true, to think that some animal will benefit from all of this plastic, a silver lining on a giant garbage patch shaped cloud. So let's look at what would need to happen. Plastics are long molecules made from repeating small molecules, the way a chain is made from individual links that are all the same. And animals don't have the enzymes needed to break these long plastic molecules down into their individual parts. Fun fact, this is also why basically all animals cannot eat wood. The cellulose of wood and the polymers of plastic are both really long molecules made from chains of smaller molecules that animals can't break down. An animal that is able to eat wood is a termite, which mostly uses symbiotic microorganisms that do have the enzymes to digest wood into its smaller units. So let's say an animal could maybe use the symbiotic bacteria strategy to break down plastic into its individual pieces. With wood, the individual parts are glucose, the sugar that we all know and love. That's what the termite gets from its bacteria. But most plastic isn't made from glucose. The individual parts of plastic are different based on the type of plastic, but none sound appetizing. While we talk about the different plastic building blocks, think about the different types of plastic in your house. PETE is a long chain of bis-2-hydroxyethyl terephthalate. HDPE and LDPE are built out of ethylene. PVC is made from vinyl chloride. PS is built out of styrene. PP is built from polypropylene. The only one that I would guess that animals could digest is ethylene, because it's a plant hormone that we eat in tiny quantities already. But then I looked up the hazards of ethylene exposure, and it causes nervous system damage over time. So maybe not the best food for things with a nervous system. The other monomers are even worse. They get labels like flammable, toxic, and health hazard. So an animal would have to evolve a way to avoid all the hazards of these chemicals during digestion. If an animal could overcome all of this, then they would be able to eat some but not all, types of plastic and turn them into energy. But an animal out collecting plastic can't know which type of plastic it's eating, and the other types would be undigestible blockages in their digestive system, much the way that plastic is now. So there's no payoff at the end of the evolutionary contortions needed to digest plastic. There are bacteria that eat plastic today, Idionella sacayensis can eat PETE. A recent study found that bacteria are evolving thousands of plastic-degrading enzymes. If animals ever find a way to thrive off of plastic, then it would probably be a bacteria doing the initial digestion, and then animals eventually getting those nutrients through the food web. An interesting alternative to animals evolving to eat plastic is that humans could stop making plastic and dumping it into the environment. We can change our behavior much faster than animals can evolve thanks to our much-vaunted intelligence. We can make biodegradable alternatives which can, get this, degrade in the biosphere, so our trash doesn't build up indefinitely. We don't have to make radioactive lemons and then hope that animals can make radioactive lemonade. Thanks for learning about animals this week. You can learn more in another video on this channel, and you can subscribe to keep increasing your knowledge. Thanks for stopping by this week to learn what makes life awesome.